Hi, this is Paul Solt from iPhone Dev TV. We're going to continue the game tutorial. Now we want to add a store screen. So we're going to have to add a new file. So I'm going to click on the project and do right click, new file, and then Objective C class. This is similar to how we made all the other view screens. We're going to do a UI view controller and we will call this our store view controller. We'll also create the XIB and select it for iPhone. So with that, we can go ahead and create it and add it to our project. Once I do that, we can now start customizing the UI. So let's check this out. We want to make sure that the orientation is landscape like before. And let's see, what we're going to do here is we're going to have some image views. I just have some test images I made for another project. It was called uh, Mystery of the Golden Egg. So we're going to go ahead and use those image assets and I want something around maybe like 80 pixels big and it's a little hard to, to get both at the same time so I can copy this and paste it using the keyboard shortcuts command C command V and we can move those somewhere down here now what I want are two buttons so we're going to customize the, the buttons like before and we'll just call this Uh, by golden egg and then we will customize the background so that we use our one button background uh, and then let's change the background of our view so it's not white so let's go with a dark gray so it's a little bit different looking from everything else we've done I want to make sure the button is 40 pixels tall and we're going to go ahead and do the 140 just so it has the same the same width as all the other buttons. We'll make a copy. I'm holding the the Alt or the Option key to do that. And now we have two buttons, but I want this one to be the white egg. And so now we finally get to work with those two resources that we dragged into the project in the initial setup. So if you look at the image assets, we have a golden egg and we have a white egg. So with these two assets, we're going to use these in our interface. And I'm just gonna assign this one to be our golden egg so it matches the button. And then the other one will be our white egg. So now you can see that there's some crazy stretching going on here. And in order to fix that, I'm gonna select them both. Let's move this over. And we do aspect fit. All right, so they're a little pixelated because it looks like they're maybe a little small, I'm not sure. Um, it could be interface builder is also showing this as pixelated on my screen. So one way to deal with that, uh, we can check out the resolution. It's 90 by 122 pixels. So if we do 90 divided, let's see, by two, it's going to be 45. So I really only want these to be 45 pixels tall. And let's just decrease them so that they look good. So that's going to make everything tiny, but that's okay. Uh, we're just making a silly little store interface here. And let's have some kind of label along the top. We'll call these our power-ups. Maybe they'll give you more points. We can tie that into the game in a couple videos once we get this all set up. And we'll change the, the power-up uh, background color, or sorry, text color here to be white. And with that, our power-ups thing is done. We will need one button. I'm going to drag it up here. And this will be our done button. And I want this one to be the same size as the pause. So we'll go, I think 70. That's what we did before. All right, so those are our buttons. Let's lay them out. And then we'll be able to bring this onto screen. So let's make this pinned to the top left. So we'll do leading space and top space. I'll hold the control or shift key so I can get both of those. And then we're going to do a diagonal drag inside the button to get both the width and the height. And I'll hold shift again. So that one's all blue. Now let's set the power ups to center it and top space. And we don't need to set the width here. It's always going to be power up. So that will be good. And these guys, I'm going to move until they're in the center. So we'll select them all with the, all I do is I highlight them by left clicking and dragging. And once we center them, we'll see the, the bars in the middle. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start maybe with, let's build everything off of this button. So let's make sure that this button is going to be centered horizontally. 
and then vertically. If you drag diagonal, you should be able to get both of those. Now we're going to build everything off of this button. So this button also needs to set both its width and its height. I'm holding shift to select both. And now that is blue. Next up, we want to drag and do the horizontal spacing. I also want the center Y so that it's centered with this one. And then we're going to set up our width and our height like before. And so that will set that up. Now we can select both of these images. And since it's aspect fit, we don't really need to resize them if we don't have to. But I do want to set the, the width and the height. So all I'm going to do is set width and height for both. It's going to say add four constraints since I have both selected. And that will do that. And next up, we need to center this and do the vertical spacing. So we'll do the center X and the vertical spacing. That one will be good. And then we have our last one to set up and we should be done with auto layout if everything looks good. So if you see all blue, that means you're in the clear and we're ready to move on. So now let's show this store screen in our view controller. So this is gonna be controlling everything. So we're gonna have a new store screen view controller. And in here, we're gonna to need to create it. After we create it, we'll need to initialize it. We're also gonna to need to create a delegate protocol, which we'll get to in a moment. First, I want to show you what it looks like to make sure that our interface stuff worked. It's always good to test stuff along the way. If you wait too long, then you won't get a good idea of what's working. So we're not showing the store controller yet. So whenever we press the store button, let's say self show view controller and then store view controller. And we won't have a way to hide it just yet, but that's okay. The other instance we want to show it is down here when they press the store button in the pause view controller. So we can just add that down here in our delegate method. So show view controller and then store view controller. And if I rerun, hopefully things work. Issues all went away. We hit store, boom, we've got the new store. We've got some buttons. I don't have any way to see quantity, so let's add a label to show the quantities, and then we'll add a outlet so that we can update that. We're going to have to connect all these buttons, and then I want to create a delegate protocol again to notify the parent class that we're doing something here. All right, so let's go to our store view controller and let's hook up the interface. So I'm going to go to the assistant editor. We're going to hide this right panel. And well, actually, no, we need that right panel because there's two more things I want to add. So let's add two labels and we're going to have to change the, the text here. So this is going to be zero, but I want it to be bigger than that. So I'm going to drag it out and then we're going to try and center it. We want the text centered and we want the text to be white color. So just set that up over here. And then we can duplicate it by holding the option key and dragging until we get it centered. And with that, we just need to set up the auto layout. So what we need is the width on both of these. So I'll just set that up. And then I want to center it and set it a vertical spacing away. So just with the vertical spacing in the center, all I did here was I dragged from the, the label to the button and everything's really relative placement. So we can just sort of build all these different components. And we started just with this button. So everything sort of is in relation to where that button sits. So now we can start this and run this again. And we go to the store, we should see everything here. We can't quit the store just yet. So that's what we're gonna work on in a few minutes. Now let's hook up our actions and stuff to our controller. So I'm gonna switch back to automatic. So this is gonna to go to our store view controller. And there's a couple buttons in here that we need to, I guess there's three buttons. So let's scroll down. We'll just insert them into the implementation block. This is done button pressed. This is by golden egg button pressed. And this is by 
just drag it down by white egg button pressed. All right, so those are our three buttons. I also want to have an outlet for these two properties since we're gonna modify them. So we'll drag that into here and just call this our golden egg label and then our white egg label. So I'm just gonna make these eggs give us more points. It's gonna be really silly, um, but I wanted an image to work with the game, so that's what we're gonna do. So when you buy more of these things, you'll get more points faster. Obviously, gold is gonna be better than white, so you get more point bonuses with the golden eggs. All right, so now let's jump back to our, our store controller .h, and I'm gonna to go to our single view. We're gonna create this new delegate properties or delegate methods in our protocol. So let's create a new protocol. And again, we'll do convention. So it's gonna be store view controller delegate. And then our methods, we're gonna use convention again and say store view controller, and then whatever action happened. So did press done, and then we pass in our self. And this is the store view controller. Now we're going to have a warning here, so we need to do our forward declaration. So we do class and then store view controller because it's not declared until down here. So we're trying to use it up here and it's sort of order of lines. So it's kind of important. And then we can copy and paste this a couple times. So we're going to switch this up and we're going to press the other options. Um, so maybe it's did by golden egg. And then maybe we have another one called did by white egg. What else do we have in the interface? That looks like it. So those three actions are things we need to call. So now we need to create a delegate. So let's create a property, non-atomic, weak. We always use weak for our delegates. Store view controller delegate. We call it delegate. And so this is when we can make announcements about when someone's interacting with our user interface. All right, so let's switch back to the .h or .m file. And down in here, we're gonna invoke our delegate method. So self.delegate, and this is going to be our store view controller did press done. And we pass in self. And we'll do something very similar for our golden egg, self.delegate store view controller did by golden egg, pass in self. And then we do it one more time, self.delegate for our last method, did by white egg. Just make sure everything matches, otherwise you'll have an issue where things aren't right. And now in our view controller, we can implement this delegate. Now remember, if we don't, implement the methods, it will crash. So if you want to check to see if it'll crash, just run it, go to the store, you hit done, and boom, we're done here. So good app, right? All right, so now let's make sure we conform to that protocol. So this will give us the autocomplete so it'll work. And I'll just put in the store view controller on the next line. And then we're going to have an issue where we're not implementing. So let's fix that issue. And and down here, right above the preferred status bar, we'll do our pragma mark dash store view delegate. There's going to be three methods here. And again, what we're doing here is just organizing things so you can see where these methods are. It makes it a little bit easier to find things. So I can just type this and then start typing store. We'll see the three methods that we need to implement. So the done one is the important one that we want to work with first. And then we just type store again and we get our other ones. So we'll do our golden egg and then we'll do our white egg. There's our white egg and we add the curly braces for each of these. Now here we can print out something like done just so we see something. And down here we can print out golden 
This is just a test to make sure that we hook things up. So it's like a sanity check to make sure you're not crazy. Then we've got our white one. So if our delegate is hooked up, we should see these messages and then we can take into account how these things work. So it's hard to see right now because of our update loop. So let's go to our game view controller and in our update view loop, if I click on this, I can actually start typing and I can go to game loop and this will filter out the different methods so I can find something. If I have a lot of code, this is a good technique. We don't need to see the timer anymore. So I'll comment that out with the two forward slashes. And then I don't need to see points removed. So I can actually just delete this line since it's no longer necessary. And we'll just clean that up a little bit. So it's not as messy in here. So we'll rerun. We'll see if this works. We'll go to the store. Golden prints out, white prints out, done prints out. So let's hook up done. Let's go back to view controller. This is going to manage everything. When we're done with the store view controller, we can just remove it. So self dot, uh, sorry, not self dot, self um, hide view controller. And then we just pass it the store view controller instance variable. And if we do that, we run it, we hit store, we hit done, it goes away. We can go into our pause menu, hit store, it appears, we hit done, it goes away. And we're still on our pause menu. Our game is not pausing. Oh, that's one thing that we didn't add yet. Um, but we'll... We'll take care of that in a, a little bit. All right, so there's still some oddball things to take care of, but that's that's what you always have when you're making a game. There's always something you see and you're like, oh, I forgot to do that. And then you go ahead and you do it. And so it's good to keep a list of things that you might have to do because sometimes when you're working on a game, you might see different things that you're like, oh, I need to do that. I need to do that. And I need to do that. And if you don't write them down, you won't remember everything. And then you'll be like, oh, what was that thing I, I need to do? And so... That's what I do. I keep a, a spreadsheet usually, especially if I'm getting serious about a project, a spreadsheet of all the tasks I need to do, and then I can mark them as complete using color-coded um, things with a Google spreadsheet. So that's, it's a handy way to keep track of things. All right, so we've got our store view controller. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a store object. And we're going to do that in the next video. So we've set up the user interface. Now we need to create some way of storing the information. And we're actually going to make it so that it can save to disk and then load from disk so that it remembers between when you play it. If you don't do that, then you'll lose that information between your game sessions. And we want this to be a fun game. So we, we want to remember whatever the user was doing. And if they're buying stuff, we definitely want to remember what they're doing. Now, this is a quick example. This is a good place to start. There are better ways at, at saving the data so it's more secure. I'm not going to get into that in this tutorial series because I want you to focus on getting your game out the door rather than securing it, making it ultra secure, only to find out that two people download it and no one purchases anything. So you spend all that time doing all that extra work and you didn't need to in order to submit to the App Store. So we're going to focus on the parts that you need to do to get the app out the door as quickly as possible so you're not just sitting around waiting for things to happen.